Andrew Waldfeld is a man that is difficult to describe in a couple of words. As a commander, he was both ruthless and merciful, something most clearly demonstrated when he ordered a village to be bombarded to the ground, but warned the villagers ahead of time so that they did have time to escape. His tactical skills were also top-notch, and as a pilot he was one of Zaft's best. As a result of this, he earned himself the nickname Desert Tiger and got command of Zaft's occupied African territories. As a person then, his habits and behavior was even more varying. Being able to quickly change from a carefree, laid-back goofball to his more serious soldier side. But most important of all, he had a thing for coffee. In today's episode of Gundam Lore, we're covering how this coffee-loving ace pilot and commander assisted in the development of the Lego and how its first battle went. Originally, systems for the Lego were being tested out in a modified Baku. It is not known exactly when this project started, but since this particular Baku had a generator that was designed to handle beam weaponry, it is most likely that it started at some point after the capture of the Alliance's G weapons. This then also meant that, unlike the Baku's beam sabers, the Lego's beam weaponry was not an afterthought and was designed to be there from the start. Other modifications to this BQ included fangs to the head, claws on the forelegs, and upgrades to the joint and power systems that resulted in a 17% increase in output, a 21% increase in speed, and an unspecified increase in agility, making this BQ much more ferocious in close combat. At the same time though, it also made this unit significantly more difficult to pilot, so much so that it needed a two-seater cockpit, something that was rarely seen in any other mobile suit. Technically speaking, this machine was meant strictly as a non-combat testbed for the Lego, but throughout its development, Waldfeld had taken a liking to this machine and decided to appropriate it as his personal machine together with his partner Aisha. As such, this machine would see combat and also resulted in valuable test data for the Lego. This situation would last until the latter was eventually completed. Naturally, Waldfeld received one of the first units produced, and he also felt that he had to test it out as soon as possible. Given how much he'd helped with the development, it was practically his baby and, as a parent, it was his duty to make sure that it performed accordingly. Da Costa, his second in command, sighed that there wasn't much difference between a field test and a joyride. But there was no stopping the Desert Tiger. Together with Aisha, he launched in the Lego. And fortunately for Waldfeld, it wouldn't take long before he encountered an enemy. A Eurasian tank column. Whether this was by accident or on purpose, we'll never know. But what we can say is that Waldfeld was overjoyed. Even though he was just fighting tanks, it was still enough to give him a feeling of how superior the Lego was over the Baku. He tore through the Eurasian tanks like they were nothing, and then suddenly, something happened. Out of nowhere, an unknown mobile suit appeared that Waldfeld hadn't seen before. It was the Astray Blue Frame, piloted by Guy Murakumo, a mercenary that had been hired to protect the tanks. He contacted Waldfeld about his mission and suggested that he back off because he had no interest in fighting. Waldfeld's response was obvious. Not only was this area under Zaft control, but he was flying his brand new machine and he most definitely wanted to push it to the limit. And so he engaged Guy. The mercenary proved to be a much tougher opponent than the tanks and he was most definitely able to put up a fight. Be careful now, or you'll lose. But once Waldfeld got serious, Guy had no choice but to back off himself. Waldfeld also decided not to push his luck and didn't pursue him any further. He'd done enough testing for today, and there was always a possibility that the mercenary had a trick up his sleeve and actually wanted Waldfeld to follow him. What he did do once he got back home was drink a good cup of coffee in Guy's honor. I feel fantastic today. A day like this deserves a good cup of coffee. You know, I think I'll have Blue Mountain today in honor of that enemy machine. Shortly after this, the Archangel entered the Desert Tiger's territory 
and the story we all know unfolded. And that is all for today's Gundam lore on Andrew Waldfeld and the first time that he used the Lego. As for the conclusion, it's basically the same as all other conclusions on lore videos dealing with Never Ending Tomorrow. It's a cool story that totally fits within the Gundam Seed continuity, told through a shitty game that might look good on screen. So as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope all of you watching have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.